And then we're back. So we go now to retinoscopy. So I opened my PDF of our module. So let me just read a few of, of the sentences of retinoscopy. So retinoscopy is performed on infants, mentally infirm, low vision patients, and uncooperative um, patients. So again, it's very important that you learn retinoscopy no, even in this um, distant learning, so we're trying to maximize whatever tool that we have or platform that we have so that we could learn, um, we can acquire knowledge of retinoscopy and I promise you I will make, um, I will make it up to you in our laboratory. I'll, I will really make sure that you will um, pass sub subjective or clinical refraction na you will be loving with anoscopy, okay? So I hope you will be loving with anoscopy. So, when I was a student, I find I find retinoscopy hard the first time. No, it's it's hard, it's difficult because you need more practice. But eventually, I have learned to love retinoscopy because retinoscopy will give you more chance to interact with patient, to give more in um education and number two it amazes patient you no know, when you do it to them when you do when you perform this procedure to the patient it will amaze them because they felt um, more cared you no know, they felt more in they are in the optical clinic really a clinic okay and third is you can really identify pseudomyopia accumulative spasm accumulative dysfunction using the retinoscope so in this um, level or in this part of, of clinical refraction supposedly we have to do schematic eye so this is an example of schematic eye that the, that the students uh, made and this one we have the actual schematic eye bought from the US no, so adjustable the pupil diameter is adjustable and also at the back it's adjustable so it's just hard okay so going back to retinoscopy um in the history of the retinoscopy the main names here for example see sir Wilma, william bowman he was the first to identify peculiar reflex in the pupil of sigmatic eyes um, but even this was supposedly ophthalmoscopy, but ophthalmoscopy um, brought the discovery for retinoscopy. Children proposed the term skyscopy. So we have skyscopy and retinoscopy. Retinoscopy is used by English speaking countries like us because we are English speaking, you are English speaking. In our house, we speak English. In your market, we speak English. We speak English, right? In our markets. Oh, so you buy that Lubati. No. So we speak English everywhere here in the Philippines. So we use retinoscopy. But in the non English speaking, they use the term skyscopy. And then we have signet, or uh, some of, of the, some of us um, pronounce it as quignet. So it's signet. He made known the clinical use of retinoscopy in his time. Okay, and then we have parent or parent. He was the one who introduced the name retinoscopy. We have Andrew Cross and Charles Sherd. They were um, responsible for the dynamic retinoscopy. Okay, so those are the background of retinoscopy. We have two systems of retinoscopy. Okay, let's, let me just um, show it to you. We have two systems of retinoscopy, illumination system and the observation system. So when we say illumination, it's about the bulb or the light inside. So the bulb is here. It's in the reti head. And when we see observation, the observation is the peephole. This one. So you do like that. So that's the two systems of retinoscopy. And we have 
plano con a plano mirror and concave mirror so because there's a there's a mirror inside when you move the sleeve up you are using the concave mirror and when you move the sleeve down you are using the plano mirror and we have the spot and the streak so the first telescope that was made uh, it was a spot retinoscopy so when we spot the light reflex is spot and then eventually they created the streak so copeland developed the streak retinoscopy so what's the advantage of the strict retinoscopy? The advantage of strict retinoscopy is it's easier for us to identify the cylinder, the axis of the cylinder compared to bulb. But you know, I still, I, I know one optometrist who still use the bulb retinoscope and he still can identify astigmatic. He can still identify astigmatic here. But you need more, more, more practice and expertise to do it. So we have three steps of retinoscopy. Step number four, five, and six. So for, for clinical refraction, I will be discussing step number four, five, six, and seven. Okay? So step number four is... Step number four, static retinoscopy. Okay, I hope you can read it. Okay. So for static retinoscopy, you will be, um, you will be 20 inches away from the patient. That's the test distance td i just wrote td but that's a test distance you are 20 inches away from the patient and the test target or tt is 20 feet away so the patient is looking at far The room illumination should be dim. So it should be dim, the room illumination. What else? Okay. So during the retinoscopy, you will not cover the unexamined eye. So for example, you will be checking the right eye. Don't occlude the left eye. It should be open. So that's the procedure of static retinoscopy. Sorry, for the PD, it should be far. Okay. So for example, I'll have this one along. I will not use the the bigger eye. I will just use the schematic eye. So I'll be using whatever tool that I have here. So, 20 inches from the patient, like that. And I will have my telescope. So, this will be my position. So, that's how far you are from the patient. Okay. So, that's for step number for or static retinoscopy okay so why is it called static retinoscopy it is called static re static retinoscopy because the patient is looking at far or a distant object so the accommodation is relaxed and it is not active so therefore in step number five and number six they are called dynamic retinoscopy because patient will be looking at near making their accommodation active so that's the difference between static retinoscopy and dynamic retinoscopy
retinoscopy spherical error. Okay, in checking for retinoscopy, we will be looking for the reflex. So the reflex is the streak or the light that comes out from your retinoscope. So let me just draw it to you. I cannot, I will try my best to, to post another video showing the reflex of the retinoscope in a dim, dim illumination or in a dim illuminated room. For fundus reflex, it's like this. This is the eye of the patient. I hope you can see it properly. We have the pupil. We have the streak. This is your retinoscopic um, streak. And we have the fundus reflex inside. The fundus reflex is inside the pupil. Okay, so if you have um, if you have read your module, there's a table there. Factors of uh, fundus reflex, factors affecting the fundus reflex. So we have clarity, intensity, size, speed of motion, form, and shape. So the more clear the fundus reflex inside the more uh, the lesser sorry the lesser the refractive error of the patient but the duller pag dull yahang color the color is dull it's somehow not really hazy but uh in in that um description in ana meaning the ametropia or the amount of refractive error of the patient is high and when say intensity, very bright or bright, low ametropia, and dim is high ametropia. And then we have the size. Pupils filled with light, if the if the reflex fundus reflex is wide or thick, it means you are approaching neutrality. Okay, so what is neutrality? What um what is the neutrality I'm talking about? Static retinoscopy it's like a hand mute process so in the hand mute process you will have your lens so you will have your lens or your glasses and you put another lens in front of it and then you check for movements right if you can recall your pmo that's the hand mute for static retinoscopy for retinoscopy you are neutralizing the patient's um refractive or the patient's refractive power but you are using the light reflex after getting the movement you will be introducing lenses so that's for static retinoscopy so i hope you can really understand so this video is long so i'm 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 making it um in a short um part and then i'll just compile it later so I'm not really an expert in video making, so I'm trying my best to to meet halfway to somehow help you learn, even if we are in a LDR situation. Okay, so that's the fundus reflex. Again, this is the streak of the retinoscope. Fundus reflex is inside. Okay, inside of the pupil. So the factors affecting the reflex will tell you if you are approaching neutrality or the refractive error is low or high. The speed of motion, if it's fast, not really you will make a movement fast, but if it goes along your speed, it means you are approaching neutrality or the ametropia is low. But for example, it took time for the fundus reflex to follow your movement or it's slow, it means that the foot it it means that the ametropia or the refractive um, error of the patient is high and the form and shape so you will know if it's it has an it it the patient has a a high astigmatism if the fundus reflex is bundle like it the the shape is different so it's like that okay 
So we go to the fundus reflex movement. So after this video is the computation for the static tonoscopy spherical error. So for the fundus reflex, sorry. I don't, okay. So we go for the width for the fundus reflex movement. Width movement is if you go towards the left, the fundus reflex will go towards the left or according to your direction. This one. You move towards here, your fundus reflex will move toward here. This is your fundus reflex and this is the shadow. This is black. This is supposed to be black. So it means it has no light in this area the fundus is, the fundus reflex is going the same direction as your direction that is with movement so when we see against movement you are going to the right but your fundus reflex is going to the left so that's against movement so if you will be using your hands like this if you are moving here the fundus reflex will go the same. So that's width. So you're having the same movement. But against movement, you are going there, but the fundus reflex is going here. So like that. So that's against movement. But if you are in the point of neutrality, you will not notice any movement at all. But the technique for retinoscopy is not to look for the point of neutrality. What? No? It's confusing. Why we don't need to... Why, why we should not look for the point of neutrality? Because it will be difficult for us to identify if it's not really moving. So the easiest way is to get the point of reversal. So meaning, if the initial... movement of this shortcut is with the point of reversal or the PR should be against and vice versa. So once you get the point of reversal, the lens before that is the neutralizing lens of the patient so i'll be talking about it in the next video so recap fundus uh, factors effect uh, fa factors affecting the reflex clarity intensity size speed of motion form and shape and the reflex movement we have the width movement against movement point of neutrality po or point sometimes known as point of reversal so that's for the initial discussion for this static retinoscopy